so you may not be able to everywhere here is dark and actually so that's why you may not be able to see me even and i just thought of putting up the camera since um it's a bit dark now my camera is on i doubt if you even see me at all okay yeah. so i just put it off okay okay let's pray father we thank you for today thank you for how far you've helped us as we start today we ask and pray your presence start with us grant us wisdom understanding in jesus name amen so today we'll be um starting off again with chemistry um the last time we met we talked about hydrogen oxygen and um for for the records i believe you can remember how we um produce hydrogen so i want you to share again with me how is hydrogen produced in the lab um, by dilute mineral acid you have seen metal sorry i didn't hear that you said what dilute mineral acid you have seen metal okay what is the test for hydrogen um, it makes the lightest things pop. Sorry? It makes a lighter things pop. Okay. How is oxygen produced in the lab? Thermal decomposition of salt. Say what? Thermal decomposition of salt. Um, also, awesome. Now we talked about acidic oxides, which are made from non-metal. We also talked about basic oxides, which are made from metal. Um, amphoteric oxides, they have the properties of both acidic and amphoteric. And then we have um, neutral oxide, which are neither acidic nor amphoteric. So today, we will continue with with hydro, with halogens, halogens also, halogens. Now, the halogens. Okay, I'm coming. Let me fix this on. Share my screen, so I can be able to see you well. All right. Okay, now halogens. What group are halogens? Group seven. Yeah, halogens are found in group seven of the periodic table. And they consist of fluorine, chlorine, mm. bromine, iodine, and um, astatine. Now, the word halogen is of a Greek origin and it means that means it means salt formats salt formats and that is because these halogens they readily form salts when they react with metals i said it's from a greek origin or greek origin not origin please it's from a greek origin meaning salt formats and they are called salt formats because they react with metals to form salts. They react with metals most times and they give us the salts. So that's why we call them, they are called salt formers. And that's why we call them the halogens. All right. Now, halogens are very, very non reactive metals. They are very reactive non metals. And they have um, similar properties. Now you notice that um, they are called; they belong to group seven, and that's because um, each halogen atom they have seven electron, and they are always willing to form the octet state. Remember, every atom strives to obtain two states, which are the duplet and octet states. 
Now, imagine group one elements being very reactive. Now, how much more the halogens that have just one electron to attain a stable configuration? They are the very, they are very non, they are very reactive nonmetals. And they are also strong oxidizing agents and they have different oxidation numbers. Another thing we should know about halogen is that they are highly electronegative because they are always searching for just one electron. Highly electronegative elements. They also share their electrons to form covalent compounds. They share electrons. They share electrons to form covalent compound. That's why you keep seeing them as chlorine gas, iodine gas, fluorine gas, even though it doesn't exist on its own, bromine gas. Now, they also accept electrons. They also accept electrons to form ionic compound when you are seeing <clears throat> lithium chloride lithium fluoride so they accept electrons now this electronic configuration of halogen accounts for their electronegative nature their oxidizing ability and the fact that they form single covalent bond all right with this now we've just given a breakdown of the halogens family Remember, fluorine is pale yellow. Chlorine is greenish. Bromine <coughs> is dark red. And um, iodine is black. OK. Let's talk about the chemical properties of the halogen chemical properties of halogen. Now, one thing we must know about the halogens is that their chemical reactivity, I re remember when we talked about periodic table, we were able to draw the um, periodic table of the first 20 elements. And one of the things we, got, we get to understand is that uh, the chemical reactivity of the halogens they decrease down the group. The chemical reactivity of the halogens, what does that mean? That means that the first member of the halogen family is what? Uh, Sorry? Fluorine. Fluorine. From fluorine to chlorine to bromine to iodine to astatine, the reactivity decreases as it goes down the group. So fluorine, it will be the highest um, halogen that is very reactive, followed by chlorine, followed, followed by br bromine, iodine, and astatine. The halogens we know are very good oxidizing agents, and that means their oxidizing power will also decrease from fluorine to iodine. Now, Let's see how um, halogens react with metals because that's the first reaction. Halogens reaction with metals. Halogen reaction with metals. Okay. Now, this is it. Now the okay, <coughs> sodium reacting with fluorine is just sodium fluoride. So this is halogen reaction with metals. Now halogen reacting with non-metals. For example, we have carbon and fluorine with non-metals to give um, carbon fluoride or most times we have um, hydrogen 
plus bromine to give hydrogen bromide. Okay, let me just give you some of the reactions. Um, so you should be okay. Let's see it here. Now this is phosphorus reacting with high with iodine phosphorus iodide now reacting with chlorine reacting with um chlorine in limited quantity now here is it reacting with chlorine in excess um now this is reacting with fluorine I hope you are getting down these reactions. Yes. Okay. And the order is reacting with that's hydrogen plus chlorine, giving you hydrogen chloride gas. Sorry, what's the difference between HClG that's in gas and HCl in liquid? What would you call the one that's liquid? Sorry? Sorry? I didn't hear you. Hydrogen chloride. Hydrogen chloride is the gas. What about the liquid? What would you call that? Okay, the liquid is called hydrochloric acid. So that's the difference between HCLG. HCLG is hydrogen chloride. And um, the other one is called hydrochloric acid. Now, the strengths, remember, we said that the order of reactivity is such that it flows from fluorine. Now, the order of reactivity of this, um, this is the order of reactivity that fluorine is greater than chlorine. Chlorine is greater than bromine. Bromine is greater than iodine. And um, the acid strength of the hydrogen halide. When we talk about hydrogen halides, that means hydrogen reacting with, chlor uh, with halogens. The strength of the hydrogen halides is such that the strength, the strength of the hydrogen halides is such that um, this is the other reactivity of the hydrogen halide. Hydrogen iodide is greater than hydrogen bromide, which is greater than hydrogen chloride, which is greater than hydrogen bro, sorry, hydrogen fluoride. Now we, we get to understand that the strength of hydrogen halides decreases from chlorine to iodine. Okay, now let's see where chlorine is an electron acceptors and other halogens are acting as oxidizing agents. Want to see where chlorine is an acceptor. For example, please give me the reaction between um, sodium and chlorine. Just write down. Sorry? No, no, just write it down. I want to, there's something I want to explain there. Sodium and chlorine.
Okay. I want you to look at that reaction very well. Do you think it's correct? Look at that reaction very well. Do you think it's correct? Yep. What do you think is wrong with that reaction? Okay. Now, let's look at this. Let's look at this. Na has an electronic conversion of what? Yeah? One S. Sorry? One S. Just tell me the number of shells, the shell numbers. I don't need those one S, two, and two S, ten. Okay, like the number, like two sodium is what? Two what? Two, eight, one. Okay, correct. Chlorine is what? So, it's seven. Seven. All right. What is happening here when it comes to bonding is that this so you donates an electron. Yeah, this donates an electron. So that means sodium sodium has a valency of plus one, right? Yes. Um, or oxidation number of plus one. Chlorine has an oxidation number of what? No, that's one. Really minus one. Minus one because it wants to accept it. So now when they react, what is it supposed to give it? NaCl. Yeah, NaCl. So why are you writing NaCl? Okay, so that means it's going to be giving you NaCl instead of um, this Na2Cl. Now, but you there's, there's a better way. This is just, um, okay, correct yourself now. Okay, balance it now. No, it can't stay there now. I thought you have to balance equations now, right? Yes. Sorry? Yes. Okay. So you should know definitely that it can't stay there. Yeah, correct. Correct. That's that's really, really awesome. That's awesome. All right. Now from here, what I was trying to say is
chlorine here accepted electron. Because it accepted electron, that's where we're looking, where, that's what I was trying to show you that, okay, at this point, chlorine accepted an electron to become sodium chloride. That's the case of treating it as an, as an electron acceptor. All right, now, another reaction of, um, remember also the decreasing power of oxidizing agent starts from fluorine to chlorine to bromine to iodine. That's a decreasing power and the order of the activity. Now, but more reactive halogen displays the less reactive from aqueous solution. More reactive halogens, please write that down, very important. More reactive halogen displays the less reactive ones from aqueous solution. More reactive ones displays the less reactive ones from aqueous solutions. Okay, I'm gonna give you, um, now this is it here, the equations. Okay, the more reactive one, chlorine is more reactive than bromine. So chlorine is going to displace uh, bromine from that equation. Now the next one, chlorine is greater than iodine. So because of that, it's going to displace it. It's gonna displace it and um, iodine is gonna be a gas there. Bromine is more, is higher than iodine. And because of that, it's going to displace it from the reaction there. Okay. And iodine is, the, is a very weak oxidizing agent. Now, what is the behavior of um, halogen when they react with water? When they react with water, what's their behavior like? How do they behave when they react with water? Once, um, Fluorine reacts with water, it gives hydrogen fluoride. And once chlorine reacts with water, it gives you um, hydrochloric acid. All right. Let's see that reaction with water. Okay reaction with water. Now, why this other one is um, a displacement reaction. Okay. Now, let's look at the reaction with alkalis. And most of the alkalis are, sorry, what's the difference between alkalis and bees? Alkalis are soluble bases. Yeah, alkalis are soluble bases. An example of that is sodium hydroxide and um, potassium hydroxide. Okay. Reaction with alkalis, we're going to be looking at this reaction. Okay, let's just see. Reaction with alkalis. Um, Okay, please write down this reaction. Reaction with alkalis. Chlorine reacting with sodium hydroxide, giving you 
NaOCl plus NaCl plus H2O. Now in different amounts, in different amounts. So that's, uh, that's why they are different. Now we have more chlorine and we have more um, of sodium hydroxide. Now bromine and iodine react in a similar way to form oxobromate five and iodated five ions. So these are their reactions with alkalis. Now, let's look at the uses of halogens. I believe you should have, um, so can you share with me two uses of maybe any halogen you know? Just pick up any halogen and tell me what are the use of halogen? For example, yeah, so, um, okay. Chlorine, chlorine is used to purify water. Is this for what? Purify water. Yeah, correct. Most times, look, that thing you see in the swimming pool is the chlorine. Chlorine is used. Chlorine is used. Um, you can you can use that for purification, for treatment of water. Not only that, chlorine itself has so many uses. We use chlorine for our bleach. You can use that even in our bleaching. Uh, it's one of the very principal um, starting material for bleaching. Now, and even germicides. Another thing again is that uh, iodine, mm -hmm. when iodine is dissolved in alcohol or potassium iodide, it can be used for antiseptic, antiseptic. Now, most times you've heard of detol. Yes. Detol is uh, has more of has some um, halogens present in it. They are being used for disinfectant and antiseptic. They have um, some of those things there. They can treat water, so that means anything that has to do with water, you can use some of it there. They can be used, and also. Hydrochloric acid, oh, is a very, is one of the most useful laboratory acids. You can use it to remove rust from steel sheets. You can use hydrochloric acid to remove rust from steel sheets. Okay. Now, polychloroethene. Polychloroethene is used in making plastics. Is used in making plastics. Now, um, fluorine, fluorine, fluorine itself is used for so many things. Um, even as toothpaste, fluorine is used with some other materials in our toothpaste maybe like calcium fluoride. Fluorine is also used in rocket propulsion. Now, um, most fluorocarbons are used as refrigerants, refrigerants, fire extinguishers. So these are one of the uses, or these are some of the uses. We, these are some of the uses for chlorine. All right. Okay, let's see this objective question. Let's see this objective question and let's see how to answer it. Okay, number one. <coughs> Seventeen. Okay, number two. Sorry.
okay what is the answer Green. bromine uh, are you sure Yes. Um, if you said fluorine, you were wrong. If you said chlorine, you were wrong. The answer is between bromine and iodine. So final answer. Bromine. Final answer. You're about losing the one millionaire slots. Final answer. Yeah? Bromine. Ah, don't tell me I checked the internet. No, it's bromine. Sorry? Are you it's checking bromine. the internet? No. I will spy on you there. Okay, you're correct. The answer is bromine. Yeah. Why is variation of halogen carried out in a film cupboard? They are poisonous. Yes, they are very poisonous. Um, even those that prepare, they, they take extra precaution because it has been known to destroy the respiratory tract also. Um, number four, in halogens, the order of decreasing powers of the dyson agent is what? Um. Oh, F2. CL2 Sorry? E. E, correct. All right. That's also. Now, let's start with some of these halogens. I will be talking about chlorine. Let's start with chlorine. Now, let's talk, to, talk about the laboratory preparation of chlorine. How is chlorine prepared in the lab? Chlorine is prepared by the action, I mean, by the oxidation of concentrated hydrochloric acid. Please write that. Chlorine is prepared in the lab by the oxidation of concentrated hydrochloric acid. Concentrated hydrochloric acid with manganese four oxide, that's MnO2, with manganese four oxide, with manganese four oxide. Sorry, what's manganese four oxide doing there? We, 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 we saw this manganese four oxide in oxygen. So, what is it doing here? Brain. Sorry? Brain. So I didn't get that. Drying. No, not drying. I did mention manganese four oxide MnO2. What well, it, it acts as a catalyst. Okay. Now the mixture is heated to obtain a greenish yellow gas, which is chlorine. The mixture is heated to obtain a greenish yellow gas, which is chlorine. Okay. <coughs> Lab preparation of chlorine. Okay, so that's the equation that manganese four oxide reacting with four molecules of hydrochloric acid, giving you MnCl2 plus H2O plus Cl2. All right.
let's look at the physical properties of chlorine. Chlorine. One of the first thing is the color. Chlorine, it's a greenish yellow gas with an unpleasant choking smell. Chlorine is a greenish yellow gas with an unpleasant choking smell. Definitely, number two, it is denser than air. It is denser than air. Number three, it is slightly soluble in water. It is slightly soluble in water. Number four, it is poisonous. <coughs> okay. Poisonous. Now let's look at the chemical properties. We have discussed most of these chemical properties under the general properties of halogen, but let's discuss some of these oxidizing property of um, chlorine. Um, some of these oxidizing property of uh, chlorine. Now, chlorine oxidizes hydrogen sulfide to yellow sulfur. Chlorine oxidizes hydrogen sulfide to yellow Okay. Okay, to yellow sulfur. Now let's look at the bleaching property of chlorine. Chlorine most times bleaches by oxidation. I believe by now you know what oxidation is. Can you tell me one of the definition of oxidation? It's became of a lesser and the... And what? Gain of And what? It's oxygen gain and oxygen loss. Okay. Uh, are you sure you understand the topic on oxidation? Yes. Okay. Now, the bleaching property of chlorine is that chlorine bleaches by oxidation, meaning that when chlorine dissolves in water, it forms hydrochloric acid and oxochlorate one acid, which is chlorine water. Now in bleaching oxochlorate one acid, in bleaching oxochlorate one acid actually gives out oxygen atom. Then the oxygen atom bleach the material by oxidation. Now this bleaching action most times is permanent because the material cannot be reoxidized by atmospheric oxygen. And this is more reason why when you bleach a material, most times it finds it difficult to return back to its original shape, or I mean the original color, because this bleaching action is permanent. Because the material cannot be reoxidized by atmospheric oxygen. Cannot be reoxidized by atmospheric oxygen. So. Whenever bleach, if you use bleach by mistake and touch any of your Christmas clothes or your fine clothes that you have been keeping, the issue is that, or your is that person's name. Okay. Let's look at, um, so that's the bleaching action of chlorine. All right, I think I should just, um, I think I should just share that, the bleaching action of chlorine. Mm. 
Now, that's the first thing there. That chlorine bleaches by oxidation. When chlorine dissolves in water, it forms hydrochloric acid and um, oxochloric one acid, which is the chlorine water. In bleaching, oxochloric one acid gives out oxygen atom. The oxygen atom then bleach the material by oxidation. The bleaching action is permanent. All right. Let's look at um, hydrogen chloride gas preparation. These are some of the compounds of chlorine, which is hydrogen gas preparation properties and uses. Now, hydrogen chloride, please write this, that hydrogen chloride is prepared in the lab. Hydrogen chloride is prepared in the lab Hydrogen chloride is prepared in the lab by the action of conch H2SO4 acid on sodium chloride. By the action of conch H2SO4 acid on sodium chloride. Please write this down. The gas is dried by passing through conch H2SO4. The gas is dried by passing it through conch H2SO4. Now, what's the essence of the conch H2SO4? Dry. Yeah, to dry. All right. Let's look at the properties of hydrogen chloride. Oh, I have not given you the formula. That would be NaCl. All right. Um, so instead of me giving the formula, can you write that formula? Can you write the formula down? All right, awesome. This is cool. 
So that's the, you've just written the formula already. I mean, the equation. Okay. Now let's look at the physical properties of hydrogen chloride. The physical properties of hydrogen chloride. Now, number one is that it is colorless gas with sharp irritating smell. The colorless gas the colorless gas with a sharp irritating smell. Now, number two. Is denser than air. It is denser than air. Number three, it is very soluble in water. It is very soluble in water. Uh, because it's an acid, it turns moist blue litmus paper red. Okay, awesome. And um, it is also soluble in non-polar solvent. Now uh, it is soluble in non-polar solvent like methyl benzene, like methyl benzene. Okay, now one of the things we must understand about um, um, hydrogen chloride is because it's soluble in methyl benzene, it cannot conduct electricity. Why? Because it does not undergo ionization when it dissolves in it. It does not undergo ionization. That means it's not separated into its component ions. But when it's dissolved in water, it undergoes ionization. And because of that, it can conduct electricity because of the presence of free mobile ions. They might ask you that, okay, hydrogen chloride is soluble in water and soluble in methyl benzene, but does not conduct electricity in methyl benzene and conducts electricity in water. Why? State the reason for that. Just let them know that when it's, soluble in methyl benzene, it does not undergo ionization. Because it's only when it ionizes that it can actually divide into its component ions, into positive and negative ions, cations and anions, so it can conduct electricity. But when it reacts, when it dissolves in water, it undergoes ionization, conducts electricity because of the presence of the free mobile ion. I hope you got that. Okay, let's look at the chemical properties of hydrogen um, chloride. Now it reacts with active metals to liberate dash. I'm not gonna tell you that. You will tell me the gas is liberate. So reacts um, HCl with a metal and tell me what gas will it will liberate. It reacts. You said? Repeat what you said. Can I do it? Repeat what you said. Okay. I said 
it reacts with active metals to liberate a particular gas. And I said, um, I'm not going to tell you the gas it gives. I'll be waiting for you to. Um, I'll be waiting for you to react it with a metal and tell me the gas it gives. Okay, awesome. So what's the name of the gas? Hydrogen. Yeah, hydrogen. Okay. Now, it reacts with ammonia to form dense white fumes of ammonium chloride. It reacts with ammonia to form... Now, that is, how, that is one of the very good tests for HCl. If you have um, different liquids and you don't know which one is HCl, uh, one of the first things you, you, do, you want to do is, um, if you have different liquids <laughs> and you don't know if it's HCl, maybe different acids together, and you've been thinking, God, what will I, oh, is this HCl, is this H2SO4, or is this um, HNO3, is this H3PO4, is this water or is this whatever? What you just need to do is the first thing you do is uh, take um, that as if you don't need the uh, acid base or whatever, you take a litmus to test if it's an acid. If it's an acid, it will turn blue litmus paper red. If the base it turns red litmus paper blue. Now you have limited your search to only acid. If it turns blue litmus to red, moist red, blue litmus red. Now the next thing you do is um, it, what if they are all acid? Now, how do you differentiate all the acids? That's where your knowledge of um, tests for, that's where your knowledge of tests for compounds come in. Now, what you do is this, you bring ammonia close to them. When you bring ammonia close to them, one of the things is this, you will see dense white fumes of ammonium chloride being released from one of the liquids. When such happens, that tells you that it is HCl because that's one of the very wonderful tests of HCl that it form dense white film. In fact, bringing it very close, not even pouring it inside. That's how funny it could be. When, you bring, when they are all concentrated acid and you bring ammonia, if it's a concentrated ammonia, ammonia will be very difficult for you to hold, especially if one is um, asthmatic, because ammonia can actually, it has a very choking, irritating smell. Now, once it, when you bring it close to HCl, Jesus Christ, very close. In fact, if you are the same room and 
the smell of ammonia has pervaded the atmosphere of that room where you are, you will notice that dense white fumes when you bring it close. So this is one of the very good tests of, of, of hydrochloric acid, of um, hydrogen chloride. Or... Now, hydrochloric acid, of, um, that's when hydrogen chloride dissolves in water, when it reacts with, um, okay, I need you to give me the reaction of HCl, hydrochloric acid, plus Natsuko-3, that's sodium trioxocarbonate-4. Sodium trioxocarbonate-4. It's actually the reaction of HCl. Uh, HCl and what? Sodium trioxocarbonate 4, Natsuko 3. Okay, um, I've noticed that you you still made the same mistake on um, sodium chloride.
Hello. Yes, sir. Oh, sorry about that. Um, sorry, I lost what you were doing. Could you do that again, please? Yeah, there was something I wanted to correct on it. That was why. Yes, it's zero. Okay, um, okay, and you corrected yourself immediately. How did you, please balance it. How did you know that was, this is the correct one? Did you not look correct before? Sorry? Did you look correct before? Okay, now I just want to give you a cool, most times, whenever you're seeing um, um, carbonates reacting, Whenever carbonates are reacting, most times, most of the reactions will end up giving you, especially when an acid is reacting with carbonates, they end up giving you water, CO2, and a salt. So it is left for you to just know which salt that you just fix in there. But as a standing rule, CO2 gas will be released, water will be produced, and a salt. So just be mindful of that rule. Just be mindful of that. Okay. Okay. Um, no problem. Let's look at uses of hydrogen gas and hydrochloric acid. Now, hydrochloric acid is used for the synthesis and analysis of many compounds. is used for the synthesis and analysis of many compounds. For example, uh, there's this compound called vinchloride. Vinchloride is actually used for the manufacture of plastics. So vinchloride is actually used for the manufacture of plastics. And that is it. All right, I have given you a test. Um, I've given you a test for, um, what do you call it? For hydrochloric acid. I've given a very solid test that if you want to know hydrochloric acid is present somewhere, um, what you need to do is bring it close to um, ammonia. Okay.
An example is this. I'm trying to see how to share my screen. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Let's see if it's coming up here. Okay. Now look at this. Um this most times will be coming up in your sort analysis. Um, we've done titration calculations, right? Yes. Okay. That's one of your practicals. Now, this is the second form of your practical. Um, this is just part of the second form of your practical. This is not all. This is actually very, very broader topic. Now, have you started um sort analysis practicals mm. okay now this is how you write your report remember when it comes to titration i showed you how to write your report um your mm. readings your first second title readings and orders now the uh, this is how you write your readings number one you put your test observation and inference now the test most times they will tell you what to do um your observation is you write what you observe and from your observation you should infer your result now place a glass rod dipped in ammonia solution that means you write you can also write glass rod plus ammonia solution at the mouth of the gas jar containing the gas the gas is this you don't know the gas as i told you that uh you might be giving some gases or some liquids. You don't know the gas. Now, they just give you a glass rod. They give you ammonia solution. And they will give you an unknown gas that doesn't have a name. Now, they want you to identify what gas is there. So what you need to do is place the glass rod, dip it in ammonia solution close to the mouth of the gas containing, the gas jar containing the gas. Now, one of the things you observe, you will write what you observe dense white fumes are formed dense white fume now when you write dense white fumes are formed or is formed oh this is an ultimate test that chl gas is present most times if you are not sure like now if probably they used litmus your observation would be it changes moist. Hello. Yes, sir. Okay. I was saying something that um, if it was um, litmus paper you used, your observation would be that it changes moist lit blue litmus paper red. Okay. Now that would be your observation. What would be your inference now? What will be your inference? Yeah? Now, if I put... Hello, can you hear me? If she is present. No, see, if I put gas plus, oh, gas plus yes. Okay, if I put gas plus blue litmus. Now, my observation is that uh, your observation will be changing. Down. Down. Okay. Your, observation, Adam. your observation will be changes blue litmus. Huh? 
change this blue litmus to red. You won't write it like this because I don't want to, I don't want to go into the details of writing. Change this blue litmus paper to red. What would be your inference? What be your inference? Yeah? Your inference would be you should be asking yourself what changes blue leaf must be prepared. Right? Yeah? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, I was asking you that your inference should be what changes blue leaf must be prepared. Right? So, what is it? Ask. Ask it. So, what's your inference? I. Sorry? I just. I don't know if it's You don't know if it's hydrochloric acid at that point. In fact, that will even acid. Yes, okay. that will be your first. You don't know if it's hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is not the only acid that changes blue litmus paper red. So, what will be your inference? That's not enough to say it's hydrochloric acid. So, what better word would you use? HCl is present. No, you can't say HCl is present. That's not the ultimate test. The, HCl is the, the blue litmus is not the ultimate test for that. What is it? The blue litmus is not the ultimate test. If you use blue litmus, what does it tell you? An acid is present. An acid. So, you just write acidic gas. The gas is acidic, acidic gas is present, or the gas is acidic, or is an acidic gas. That's your inference. All right. So um, we'll be stopping here for today. We'll be stopping for today um, to have our last class for now. On the um, we we'll stopping here for today to have our last class tomorrow. But um, I just had to do this so that you have an idea of. Um, you have an idea of um, what they call it, of um, the salt analysis. When you're asked to do your salt analysis, now the ultimate test that HCl gas is present is when it is a glass rod of place with ammonia is brought close to it. You see ammonium chloride gas fumes forming. That shows you that that HCl is present. And another one to test for it is that dip a glass rod in silver trouser nitrate five, that is AgNO3, at the mouth of the gas, you will notice white precipitates will be formed. That shows you that HCl is present. These are the ultimate tests for HCl. Um, I think we are almost done. We are already done. We just have high nitrogen to continue with. We've gone very far this in this little time we've spent. And I believe it was really an awesome, awesome time. Okay. Um, let's pray. Oh. Before we pray, I'm actually looking. Okay. Um, before we pray, um, please, your assignment would be that you should explain the fountain experiment. Explain the fountain experiments. I need you to be conversant with that. Explain the fountain experiment. Okay. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for how far you've helped us. Blessed be God forevermore. Thank you for this new knowledge you've impacted onto us. Be thou exalted in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. All right. To have a wonderful evening.